to everything else. It's the room. Um, I, he asked me to mix that song for air. It was awesome. Plus, I knew the song. It was a remix he made of Alphabeta Gaga, which is a great song, and I loved it. And I mixed the shit out of it. I was like, I, this is awesome. It's one of my favorite bands. I love working with Mark. It's great. And I turned, in the, I turned it in. And at that moment, I had just, I, I didn't have a car. I had let go of my car. It was New York. <clears throat> I moved to New York, so I let go of my car. And just at that moment, we kept the car thing going as far as possible, but it was just, it's not practical in New York. Mm. And I had just started using new speakers, which were um, Dynodios BM15As. And so basically I was making music in that room. And so I mixed the song and it sounded absolutely glorious. And, um, and I gave it to Mark, very proud of myself. And Mark got back to me and said, you know, it's a little, it's a little bass light. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So I went back and reopened the stuff and try and, and understand what he was talking about. And I was like, how the fuck? No, what is he talking about? It's not bass light. It sounds bananas. So yeah. Went, awesome. So I said, no, I think it's great, man. You should use it as is. And then, um, and he's very kind. He's, he's very sweet, very kind. He said, no, I really think it's a little bass light. So I went back and I put 0.1 dB more bass, you know? Um, and I said, hear more bass. And then, uh, and I was really like listening to it. I was like, no, I really think this is right. I really think this is right. I really think this is right. And then I gave it to him. And he, um, he went and, and, and he said, well, if this is your vision, that's not working for me. And mm. so he went and hired Russ Elevado, who's a total badass, and who was way ahead of me at the time. I was like the uh, newcomer, you know? Russ Elevado already had done voodoo, and like he's he worked at Electric Lady. He didn't work in that tiny room like I did. He was like an established guy. I was just kind of like, you know, knowing uh, my way up. And I was so pissed. And 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 I was like, I don't I was like, I don't I don't fucking get it. And so so I took my I took that music and I went to listen to it everywhere. And I realized, huh. oh yeah, not only is it bass light, it's offensively bass light. It's just right. god awful. What was I thinking? What is wrong with me? So then I went back into the room. I was like, well, it sounds great here. And I was like, oh, what I hear is not what I get. Right. And I lost this great opportunity because, you know, Mark is a badass. And he's like a great business person too. And we had this great thing going and I ruined it. A, by not knowing, by not having the right room and the right speakers in the right place. And B, by, by not listening to my a collaborator, probably. So I learned a lot on that stuff. Yeah, a lot on that on that in that session. Is that? Do you think that's one of the the biggest kind of learnings for you? Is that was oh, that experience? absolutely by far the number one moment where I was like, oh, what an idiot, you know? And um and um and it, and it's great uh, because that I as I said earlier or before we got interrupted. I, you, I, don't, I firmly believe that the true lessons can only be learned through failure. There's no lesson learned through success. Right. That's not how the human brain works at all. And yeah. so uh, that's why you have to let your children fail. Otherwise, they'll never be good at anything. Mm. And it's really hard. It's like, you don't want them to fail, you know, yeah. for your dad, like helping. But the reality, and I'm, I'm the worst offender at that, but you yeah. got to let the children fail on their own. Otherwise, they will not get better. Yeah. And, so, and it's the same for me. So I, in, in a way, I'm grateful to, for that experience because I never made that mistake since. Right. Uh, I've been, uh, and I've been very obsessive about the quality of the playback in my rooms, which has created a certain first community around because you come to a room at Flux and everything sounds bananas. And then, um, uh, like, for real, we spend... Yeah. I spend more time and energy making sure the, pl the place sounds good than, than anything else, really. That and the coffee are the two main things. Right. Uh, and then um, it's allowed me to work very, very fast and also to build a reputation for having very hi-fi sounding mixes because what I hear is what I get. And um, so that's cool. Yeah. But, you know, I, w I wish I had not done that because if I had not done that, then maybe uh, he would have called me for the um, Amy Winehouse record instead of calling, um, you know, Tom. But sure. you don't know. History is history, you know? That's it. That's it. You can't be right. But to me, I'm grateful for the experience. Uh, it's taught me two things. A, take care of your own. B, listen to your collaborators. 
there's yeah. always a kernel of truth, even with the most complicated situations. And I've been mm. in very complicated situations since. There's always a kernel of truth in somebody taking the energy to tell you they don't like what you're doing. You know how hard it is to, for humans to, for most humans to go and say, ah, I don't like this. You know, you, I don't like you. I don't like your work. It's very hard. It takes energy. If somebody's going to spend that energy on you, you better listen. I do. And yeah. I've, very often it's completely inarticulate. Like, I want it more blue. It's not blue enough. Uh, <laughs> okay. What kind of blue would you like? You know, like, what's, what's, what's blue today? You know? And, uh, and then you figure it out. Well, but yeah. you, can't, you can't dismiss, you can't dismiss your team's comments. Otherwise, why are you in the team in the first place? Right? Yeah. Huge so, lesson. Yeah. Huge. That, that was, that was great for me. That was really a, yeah. a good thing. And it, and actually it's a turning point for me. At that moment, I was like, this will never happen to me again. Right. Okay. And, and I did a few, I did a few, I, I, we worked on other things together after that, but if, but something disconnected, I no longer was trustworthy. And also I was no longer fun to work with. Wow. And it's not, a, it's not about uh, being a carpet and saying yes to everything. It's about understanding the value of feedback in teamwork. And so, yeah, that was, that was awesome. And that's what I try and instill in everybody here. There's a lot of people who go through this place as uh, assistants and, and uh, I said, like, don't, you know, and they come up and they do this, like, they do a really bad session with a beginner downstairs, you know, it's commercial studio, so we take sessions. And, uh, and they're like, oh, I can't believe these people. You wouldn't believe the stupid stuff they say. I said, well, what did you, this, this was sift through it for the actual information you needed to make them happy with their music, you know? It's no fun to have to yeah. sift through the sand to get the one nugget more information you need, but whatever, that's the job, you that's know? That's it, that's yeah. it. So that, that was great for me. That was a good yeah. moment. There are so many of those moments which I'd like to talk to you about, but you know, with, with time being what it is, I, I'm gonna just, we'll leave that for perhaps part three at some stage, but I just wanted yeah. to ask, ask you quickly about, I think I'd read something with you. Um, I'm not sure how long ago this interview was, but you said that you sat down every day and tried to listen to something new. Is that, is that something that you still do? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, how, how, otherwise you, you just, um, you just uh, become stale, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, every morning um, I, I listen to, to something new. I try and give it like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, I mean, most mornings, sometimes, you know, Armageddon hits and you can't like the, the idea of looking for something new to listen to is far away from the consciousness. But overall, I come up here, I sit down, I put something on. Um, I also have, I'm an avid, um, um, shaz shazammer. Is that a word? Okay. It's a word now. So yeah. like, for example, I, I, I had dinner with uh, my friend Louis Cato on Monday <laughs> Um, no, on Sunday, and we went to an Ethiopian restaurant on the west side, right? We spent half the dinner with our phones in the air like this, trying to figure out what that track <laughs> What <laughs> track? This is crazy. Is this a six? Is this an eight? Where's one? And like, and, and we like talking about, you know, our lives and, and projects, or whatever, but about every 10 minutes, we're like, what's this one? And so I have this wow. entire list of stuff that I, listen, that I hear in the restaurants and, and stuff like that. And then I come back here and I have my phone. I title it and, and I figure out what it is, how it sounds, why I felt the way I felt. I figure out who did it, you know, because it's interesting to see, did they do something else that good, you know? And, um, and, I, and so I have, this, um, I have this constant, always looking for new, fresh stuff. Because if you're producing records, depending on the style of records, but Obviously, for the David Crosby record, there's not going to be that many new textures. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, two very old Martin guitars, one on each side, and uh, a bass in the middle, and then a lot of vocals. And that's great. But I, I, right now, I'm developing a really great duet from Toronto, Canada. Canada, And um, they're great writers, and they're also very, very good producers. And, uh, but I am the stopgap. They send me their stuff and I'd shape it into a record, right? And we're developing a huge catalog of songs. And so I have to have inspiration on new stuff. I want to do something. I, want, I, I don't want to sound like anybody else. I want it to be fresh and uh, yeah. has 
And so for that, you need inspiration. And so, because music is, as a music producer, you're really just a, a funnel, like a meat grinding machine. You know, you you have a bunch of input, then you grind it, and then output. You cannot recognize the input, the output from the input, obviously, because there's a grind in the middle. But without the input, there's no output. And so, yeah. so I need a lot of input for me to be inspired. And I listen to everything, everything. Yeah. That, Ethiopian music. Today, I mixed a song for a band called Asking Alexandria. Uh, oh, yeah. At, yeah, I did an Atmos mix for their, for their next single. I don't, I don't really very often listen to that kind of music, but I, I was like, I would rabbit hole the hell out of that band. And I just went and listened to everything and to see what the vibe was and so I can convey their vibe for the, for the you know, immersive mix. And, and uh, yesterday, I listened to an old, early Greg Ray Porter stuff that I thought was gorgeous that, that um, Al Schmidt had done. And then, like, it's little, you know, I listened to a lot of, like, 20th century um, French, uh, modern, like, romantic stuff, like uh, um, a lot of Ravel, a lot of Debussy. I just, mm. I just love that stuff. So it's, like, white. But every day I listen to something new. That's great. That's great. And it shows up. It shows up in the, in the music. There's, you know, with all the evil that um, Spotify and Apple Music and the titles that have unleashed on us, uh, the they've unleashed two great things: playlists, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, level matching. Right. So those are the two crowns on their heads. Everything okay. else. It's a bit of a questionable legacy, but those two things are awesome. So if you yeah. like, you know, that, that Ethiopian track um, that I found on Sunday that we were like, I was like, wow, this stuff is bananas. I, I put it up in title and all of a sudden there's a whole cornucopia of Ethiopian stuff I didn't know about. So I'm right. going to uh, waste my entire life listening to for the next couple of weeks. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Fab, I just got two more things to ask you about. You quickly you mentioned immersive audio there. Um, what what is your take on immersive? Do you think it's it's going to take over? Has it got legs? I think that it's going to be one of the formats. I think that because of the way, at least the Atmos format uh, is uh, is organized um, and is designed, it has a lot of ventures in it. It's it's very much future proof, uh, and it's adaptive, meaning that we as the content creator create the best possible experience with, you know, 812 speakers all over the room, right? Like, it's crazy. There's rooms that have 30 speakers. And um, if the room's properly set up, it's a beautiful experience, but very few people have 30 speakers, right? But the, what, the, what the Atmos format does is that at the point of playback, so it's on your phone or it's in your car or it's in your home studio, it's in your big studio, it's in your movie theater, it's in your theme park ride experience or in your 3D goggles. At the moment that your file, which you designed in a very immersive place, at the moment that the file is played, the Atmos technology can recreate an experience for that playback system. Mm -hmm. So if you play my mix in a room that has ceiling speakers and back speakers and is well-tuned, you'll hear very much my mix. If you're listening to it in, in, in stereo um, on, on headphones on your iPhone, you will hear a rendition of that experience in stereo mm -hmm. in your it's not, is it as good, is the stereo rendition on your iPhone as good as being in my room with me? No, but it's the same for stereo. When I mix my record in stereo, it sounds nice. I send it to my clients and they listen to it on their shitty, you know, whatever, broken or like their Beats by Dre stuff where there's like plus eight dBs at 60 Hertz. So they don't hear what I hear, right? Right. So what I think the value of the Atmos format is that is it's an encapsulated format that has all the playback system at the point of, uh, point of playback. So you're not, it's not a fixed uh, um, format, it's an evolving format. And also there's level matching in it, meaning that you, there's no point of trying to have the loudest record on earth. So you can make mm -hmm. the best, not, not the loudest one, which is really wonderful. Um, right. So the, those two things, and also they're, you know, they, they're a big company and they really enjoy making money. So they're working very hard um, at, um, at federating people. So Mercedes is down, BMW is down. I'm sure Tesla will have an option to put an Atmos system in there very soon. And then as they come to the more affordable cars, it, it may become default that, you know, you right. 
This is a great place to listen to Atmos. And then um, all the sound bars, every single TV that you buy today, flat TV, they all have some sort of an Atmos rendition system in it. Um, mm. And so, so if, if things keep going, and the labels are pushing because it's another version of their master that they can resell. Um, mm -hmm. So there's, there's financial reasons for it to be a long lasting format. And there's ancillary reasons to the design of the format that makes sense for content creators to future proof their, their, right. their. so right. it's very young. Um, I think it has legs. Okay. Okay. Last but not least, Jackster is all about giving credit where credit is due. Are there people that you would give credit to for helping you get where you are today? Whether oh, it be yeah. men or people who have helped you on your way? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're no one without, nobody's anyone without their, their uh, community. I mean, that, like, that's why a lot of people um, despair when they're like, stuck in their mother's basement somewhere in Sioux City, Iowa. And you know the, the nearest musician is a thirty-minute drive. Uh, that's this is just tragic. When I moved to New York City, <clears throat> I knew no one, not one soul in New York City. And I moved a little my, with my little rig, and I looked for a place where I could park the rig so I could finish the records that I was in the middle of doing. Um, and um, and what um, and I, I found a room in this in this building, this very building I'm still in. And that was 812 years ago. And I moved to this, to, to this room and I bumped into this gentleman named Graham Hawthorne, who is a world-class drummer. And I mean a world-class drummer. His last, right now he's on tour with Madeleine Peru before he was on tour with David Byrne. Um, wow. Yeah, before he was on tour with uh, Paul Simon. Mm. Uh, he's a total badass. And, um, and he popped his head into the room that I was renting and he said, Hey, um, that sounds pretty good. Uh, do you want to be my roommate downstairs into another room? And I was like, well, what's the rent? And the rent was like a fifth of what I was paying upstairs. I was like, yeah, I'll be your roommate. So I came downstairs, started, he started on, on sessions and introducing me to his, to his friends and re recommending me. It's very difficult to recommend somebody. It's very hard yeah. because if the person you recommend fails, Basically, you fail the person that you made a recommendation to. So you'll you'll notice. I noticed as I went up in the ranks that nobody ever recommends anybody. Either you work together with your crew, but a, a third party, at least in New York, it just doesn't happen. Unless yeah. it your it's a it's a community based thing. But like you know, some of the top top level people, it happens from time to time. But yeah. your recommendation will work. Uh, after, after a certain level, because I recommended some people, I ignored it, or all those roles, and I recommended some people, some super high level people, like that, who whom I thought were as good as or better than me, and recommended them for gigs, and it didn't go well. And I was like, "What? This dude? This dude is a badass. Have you seen his discography?" And the client was like, "Nah, then I just don't want to deal with him." I'm like, "Wow, that is odd, you know." So it's 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 very it just incredible. But Graham recommended me and actually Graham brought me on to gigs. And so he connected me with Mark Shaman. And then I started to do the, uh, the hairspray demos for the musical. Uh, and then mm -hmm. I got the movie. So I did all the doctoring for all, the, and then I, I connected me to this guy and to this guy. And I, I, I always say, because this question comes quite a bit, I always say I can very easily trace every single gig I have back to Graham in two or three steps, every single one. Because wow. I came to New York as a complete like solo with not one connection. So it's like, I, 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 Graham was patient zero basically. And yeah. then, so you, yeah, it's, a, it's an easy and fun game. Like if you look at the David Crosby record, the, the three David Crosby records, I'm on the David Crosby records because Michael League from Snarky Puppy called me. Mm. The reason why he called me is because we were together so that's one, one, one level. The reason we, he called me is because we were together on a Lucy Woodward record. The Lucy Woodward record, right. I got that record because Scotty called me to, to mix her record back in the day and uh, Graham introduced me to Scotty. That's it. Wow. Yeah, any, record in my disc any record in my discography, I can trace it back to Graham. 
um, organically in two or three steps. It just, Incredible. It just, it's just what it is. Wow. So that, I owe that man. Um, That's great. That he's a amazing, one of the best musicians I've ever worked with. And he's a, and, um, and he, um, he gave me my first step. And every step right. was a subsequent step after that. Yeah. And I was working in Paris. Right. Obviously, I paid for my, you know, I moved over here and I paid for my college um, cash playing music. Yeah. But, but a career as a music producer and mixer, a music maker in New York, Graham built this room or he built that room over there. It's now my studio. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. One person. That's great. Yeah. Wow. Great. Fab, thank you so much for all your time this evening, this morning, um, and for jumping back on and for doing part two of this. I really appreciate it. So, uh, look, thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you for um, developing Jackstar. We need um, we need proper credit. This um, the the current state of things is is um, difficult, and um, there's no more liner notes. There's no nothing, and you're only as good as the last record you made or as your discography. And um, for the longest time, um, when, um, when people would look me up and with um, allmusic.com, which was the, the only way to get you know, any more information, I had done literally nothing. Because I'd done, uh, to the world, I was just started making music because I, I never took care of my, of my credits by myself. I wasn't really managed. I did, and I did a whole bunch of um, independent records that, and nobody ever cared to put my name in. So mm. like I had Grammy nominations and some records I worked on have won Grammys, but on all music, I didn't exist. Like literally did not exist. There was another guy with my name on it, you know? And then, so people don't know and our, our currency is our discography. And so your platform is the first that I see that actually takes care, great care and making sure of being accurate, that we can actually correct the mistakes that we can uh, manage the page, and I'm so I'm I'm very, um, I'm very happy you're doing what you're doing. It's wonderful. We need it. Professionals ah. need it, and also for for civilians who are not in the I call them civilians who are non music makers. For civilians, uh, it's great if they if they love a record, if they're curious, if they're really music lovers, right? And they want to know, okay, the Susanna Backer record is great. It's amazing. Who did that? Then they will find Michael and myself. And then they will find what other records we've done. And then they'll discover Snarky Puppy. And then they'll discover, I don't know, Eliades. And they'll discover all sorts of other records. And so I think what, what you're doing is a beautiful thing. And I'm very grateful that uh, you're doing it. Well, we, we appreciate your support so much. So that, that means the world to us. And um, if there's anything we can do to help you or to help anyone who's watching this, who's a music creator, then uh, always reach out to us at Jackster. But thank you so much for your support. Um, before we go, I think we should also give puremix.net a little yeah. bit of a uh, a little bit of a wrap, which is an incredible site with wonderful tutorials and educational material. Well, thank you. Yeah, so about 10 years ago, one of the assistants here convinced me after watching some videos I had done for my friends at Sonox and, and UA, I had done some videos to help them out because they were generous with me. And I said, oh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll show people how to use your products. Why not? You know, and then those videos hit like half a million views. And Guillaume, who was um, an, an assistant here at the time, was like, you know, if you want to start um, um, a music tutorial, like a production tutorial website, well, I'll start with you. I said, never. I said, I'll never do that. And then he worked. I said, I'm too busy. I'm not doing it. He worked me to the bone for six months. or I, I don't know how long he did it, but he, he was like relentless. And then and I said, okay, fine. We'll just do a quick DVD. You know, I'll take three days. We'll shoot four or five videos. We'll make a DVD, and then you, and then we'll release it, and then, and then that's it, right? And here we are, ten years later, and we have two hundred fifty thousand members, and um, and it's uh, crazy. It's an absolute crazy community, and it's I love it. I love everybody there, and and uh, it's a positive force, and and I've learned a lot doing it. Um, like I've met people I would have never met before. I've learned stuff that I I didn't know before. And I've gotten a lot better at what I do because if you want to be able to show something to someone, you have to really own it. This is the, I, that's what I discovered with Pyramix is that if you really want to be a badass at something, like a real world-class badass, you got to teach it. That is the ah. only way to be truly in control because yeah. to, be able to, teach, to be able to teach it, 
you really, really have to own it, like really deeply. There is no explaining something to someone in a particular and pointed and useful manner is the hardest thing to do in the world. It's really, really hard. And you, you notice that the first time you try from a distance, it's like, yeah, man, I'll just, I'll just open my session and I'll just tell people what I'm doing. And then you start doing it and you're like, hmm, not easy. So to, tr <laughs> to truly, truly own something, and this is, this is now my new motto. If I really want to know something, like if I learn a new trick for mixing or for recording and I really want to memorize it, I teach it to somebody else. Right. And if I teach it to somebody else, it's part of me now. If I okay. don't, it will fade. But if you really yeah. teach it to somebody else, if you really teach it to somebody else, it's new. So Pure Mix, which was started as, uh, what well, it was Guillaume's business idea. For me, it was another potential uh, business opportunity and a way to give back. Um, yeah. And also, or the calls I was getting every day is like, how do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do this? I was like, well, go to Pure Mix. Uh, so that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> and and it re in the end, it's made me better. Yeah. And the feedback we get from everybody is wonderful. It's, it's just a beautiful community. So, and it's growing like, yeah. oof, like crazy. So I'm, I'm very proud of it. And, um, and we have lots of amazing stuff coming. I'm shooting some crazy stuff in the, in the test. Yeah. And it's like, now it's like yeah. fun, like a, a theme ride for me. I was like, <laughs> okay, go shoot in that studio with that guy for this record. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> really? <laughs> I can't wait to see it, man. But look, thank you so much again for your time. It's been so lovely to chat with you. Um, take care, mate, and hopefully we'll do it again sometime soon. Anytime. Just call me. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. Ciao.